yeah, it was that was such a learning experience. Like I was on my way to being a juvenile delinquent and got caught, mm-hmm. and then sat around a bunch of real juvenile delinquents, and I was like, scared, no, let's get out of here. I think I'll just go to prep school. <laughs> yeah, killers. <laughs> yeah, just bad, <laughs> bad folks. Yeah, if they weren't killers, they were. They were, def- were going to be. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, I think if I wasn't a privileged little Marblehead, Massachusetts kid, I'd be in jail because mm-hmm. I was a pissed off teenager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When uh, my parents got divorced, I was like, "All right, oh, that's the second yeah. fucking Santa Claus. You don't get to lie to me twice." Mm-hmm. You know, I just said all bets are off. And I was How old were you? Law breaking miscreant, sixteen. Yeah, that's the age. Right? Really pissed me off. Look at that. What Look the, at that. What is that? It's a that's a vulture. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. That's a vulture? I don't yeah. think so. Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah. Do you think there's just some carcass over there? He's looking for one. If there was one, there'd be a bunch. But look at that wingspan. It's like six feet. It's huge. Maybe it's a condor. The, I guess the I thought you could see the head above the the wing the wing. You can with the wings because of the, the shape of their neck. Well, they don't have feathers on their head, so because they stick it right into the guts of carrion. Oh, so they, yeah. So uh, e- evolution took care of that. Yeah. issue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. and it made them look so much more attractive. In the yes. Yeah. No, they can eat a spleen and go straight to a cocktail party. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is the cocktail party. <laughs> it probably is. What do you That's ever see those the, cats yeah, that have one no of those fur? German parties? <laughs> <laughs> those cats that don't have like hair or fur, I should say, is the, and they're. <laughs> <laughs> See, coming. that's a crow. Are you th- oh, that's a different bird. But you know I what? The that was Im- the same one. No, that's a that. No, that's a crow. He's going to land. The smart, but, the smarter of the. But the amazing bird. thing about being up here is you see a perspective you never see. You get to see, looking down on birds, looking at their backs instead of them flying over your head. We're up in the mountains here, and we're looking down at the Pacific, the coastline there. You think that's like Venice over there, and? We're L.A. And- it's not Venice. It's um. Where would that be? Is that would be Santa down? Monica all was, the way out to oh. Palos Verdes, and then Catalina out beyond it. Oh, is that that land in the middle there? No, that's much further out. What? The Catalina's way out there. Catalina's way. Out. Catalina's really grayish, light blue. Yeah, because that's twenty six miles. That I know. That is that. You're exactly right. Yeah, it's because it's in a song. <laughs> I always remember that one. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Santa no, I don't know Cannes. it. It starts off 26 miles across the sea. Santa Catalina's are waiting for me. A Santa Catalina's the island of romance. Romance. Do you think that was brought about from the, that when you kept saying that for some reason, I kept seeing the water skiing tournaments where they would take yeah. people oh, yeah. from Manhattan Beach 26 miles out and then back. People would water ski for 60 miles. There and back, you mean? Yeah, which is just insane. Yeah, I mean, uh, you do it for fifteen minutes and you're exhausted. At least now, I wouldn't even your water arms, ski now. right? Because your arms. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about your the rest of your legs or back, but you're holding on to, to right, and that's got to be pulling like a motherfucker. Yeah, the, they. The, you're holding on to the the end of the. the uh, they do it. They don't drag. They do it. It's still a loose rope like that, but they somehow wrap it around their back. But oh. oh, no, they're holding it together behind their back. They are? In leaning is what they Nowadays, do. I haven't seen water They're skiing. holding I the mean, bars uh, yeah, water behind their lower back ages. and leaning back. Oh. But that's still brutal. Have you ever done that? No. Water skiing? I've water skied. Have in, you? In Maine on a, no, in Maine on a lake and then actually a bunch way out in the ocean off of the, off of the coast of Marblehead. I had no fear when I was young and we had a boat and I would go out to you not. couldn't see land uh-huh. and then we would water ski. But you'd fall and the boat would be like the size of a water beetle on the horizon turning around to come and get you and you could see hundreds of feet below your skis of just clear, empty ocean. And I was like, oh God, you just, you wait and the Meg is coming up for you. In Massachusetts too. Yeah, you could get eaten by a great white out there. That waiting for the boat to come back wasn't fun. That was when I realized. But I went out in hurricanes, which is insane. On um, water ski? On, no, 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 on a boat. <laughs> like, to we that used out. to water ski in hurricanes. <laughs> we were bad motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. We were bad back then. 
So, but you were in, in Boston. It sounds like you were in the uh, were you uh, like in one of the suburbs that close to the coast. Or something? I was north of Boston. I think it's north of Boston, or is it not? I don't know. Marblehead, Massachusetts is Marblehead, right. Yeah. yeah, it's right on the coast. It's right next to Salem, where all the witches were. Oh yeah, yeah. I have friends who live in uh, right over there, next town over, Marlboro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah half an hour, forty-five minutes from Boston. Yeah. It's nice there. It's beautiful. I went back for the first time in 20 years and drove through it. It's this idyllic 1700 sea town. But I hated it. It was so preppy. And, but I hated public school. I, that felt like going to war to me. Uh, were there hostile people? I mean, there that, were, or, but or I think more it's like just, just the age, too. And I, yeah. Is that high school or junior high? Or junior high was scarier yeah. than high school. It. Yeah. yeah. Same junior year. high was horrifying. Hated it. That's really the worst stage. I don't know. My, oh, my son's having the opposite experience where he really... Is he cool? I was in a very dork. nice... He's, he's, he's right there. He's dork, but he's such a beautiful kid. Yeah. Know? So I don't know. He's so, such a beautiful, you know, yeah. demeanor to him. But oh, junior high was scarring. I mean, I, high school, I could, at least re, I could finally reinvent myself and decide I was going to be have a great high school experience and that I was going to be popular you know all those yeah things. and i made it happen that's brilliant there wasn't a moment i've had that happen but only during those time periods then. where i was nothing where i came from i could go away to camp and be a star you know mm-hmm. and start all over again which is weird you could make that shift in attitude and tell people not to fuck with you anywhere you are I always needed an impetus. I always needed someone to come up and think I was great, and it blew my mind and made me instantly confident. So you don't, I, I, we don't know what this little range is called. We're at the top. I don't know what the elevation is. I think is. this is the – those are so the we're... San Vicente mountain okay. range. All right. It's the back of the wild part of Malibu, the wild canyons okay. of Malibu. So we couldn't have been staying too far from here where I was staying. No, Calabasas is up. I don't know. In Neighbors, it's on the other side of the mountain from Malibu. That's, that was one of the... Is that what they said? No, it's... Well, it, it it's true. I looked on a map. <laughs> oh, this yeah. Is, it's like a mountain that cuts... No, they were lying to you. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> so I was I had the number of the episode you were on the, 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 the last time, which was also your first time, that you, when we did the podcast from uh, the set of... Well, the missing girl. Right? The missing Miss, girl. Missing girl. God, that seems like a fucking lifetime ago. It's a while ago. Is that five years? If four? it's not, it's close to it. If it's four, that feels about four. right. If it's five, it, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Four, I know. Somewhere around there. It was 2014, years. right? Or was it 2000? That sounds right. So maybe it's going, yeah, maybe four it's and five and a half years. years. Yeah. Yeah. God, what episode? Oh, been, oh, the episode. So you were on like that, 259 or something. I think that's the number that's currently stuck in my head. But Is that what it and is? It's now we're at five. This is like, as I, I just posted from, from here on my visit, I posted on uh, Thursday 539. That's amazing. Some of these guys, though, they're like over 1,000. You know, they've been doing it. But they, some of them do two shows a, a week. Yeah, but five. How many you've done? Five hundred and how many? Thirty-nine have gone up. I already that's have a, five or six more in the can, ready to go up. You know, that's a lot. That's so a lot. that's five hundred and that's an hour of programming each time, or it varies. Yeah, but it's it doesn't take me that long really to put the whole thing together. I mean, you know, I mean, it it does when you look at every, but it's not like it takes. I don't know. It's hard to say because you know I might have to go to a place to do the recording, and you gotta it takes you know time to. Yeah, set all that up. But that's very you're very established at it now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who listen in or who know about the show. Or yeah, but it's a real. It's become a real thing. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to gauge because you know, you get a lot of people emailing and co- reaching out about their film. They want some sort of help or guidance or something. Yeah, coverage, or they want to come on, or and it happens all you know all the time. But, yeah, but that's but, great. But you know, it also doesn't. That doesn't really like create opportunities. You know, but it's a. It is a signal of sorts that there's a lot of people out there, you know, listening to the show. And I think a lot of people listen to the show, or they know about it. Like yeah. I don't want to suggest that everybody listens. I know. I'm projecting. <laughs> no. No, no. I, but I think I, I have. I, I have a very, very s- select. So I won't use the word small because I really have no idea how many of the 
I mean, it's hard. To, it's, it's I can sort of gauge that there's several hundred people that listen to every episode of the show. Right. Right. And there, then there are thousands potentially of people that dip in, and depending on who the guest is, or you know, they may they may listen. Right. Or the app they're on, maybe because you know it may be that one show automatically then plays the next show at the end. So yeah. Maybe listening all of a sudden. You, I don't know. It's true. I don't know how it runs. I don't. It's one of the ones I'm faithful to. But uh, like, yeah, some of those guys have been doing it a long time. And, but again, I, I do occasionally will post a second show if like I've overextended myself to deadline oriented content. So like, like you got a movie opening, I gotta get right, it up. right, I gotta get it up. And if I made that promise to several people and their all their movies open in one week, I'm kind of in trouble. No, yeah. I don't want to make a show like eight hours with sixteen different guests. You know, it's not my. Does someone always is someone always promoting something? Usually they are, right? Like, how do you get ones with a Richard big... E. Grant interview? Well, that comes about where the, you get an email from the publicist uh, for this new movie. It's called "Please Forgive Me." Or, no, it's called uh, "Won't You Forgive Me?" I think, or something like that. Can you ever? Can forgive you ever me? forgive me? It's called. Yeah. Can you ever forgive me? I'm saying it again, so I can it's edit so it later. good. Yeah, and, and and with Melissa McCarthy and um, yeah, Grant, and what what's his name? Richard E. Grant. Richard, Richard e. Grant. <laughs> yeah, Richard E. With Grant. Richard E. Grant. And I, but and now now you mind you, here's the thing. So it's a Melissa McCarthy movie. <coughs> there hasn't been much up about the movie yet. The timing is important. We don't know that that what's his name? G- G- Ginger Grant? No, you don't <laughs> you don't know that Richard E. Grant is going to be end up getting a lot of award op- uh, nominations and all this stuff. So at oh, that God. point, so there's not the kind so the the, the, the timing is good for me. As much as here's a guy who always wanted on the show because, like yourself, right. with an L and I was an enormous movie. But this was post Oscar nomination, right? No. Oh, pre. Yeah, this oh. I did this months ago. I know it's when what the you're movie just saying, came out theatrically. Some, some reason. So that I was didn't... maybe about I'm going to guess around five months ago, maybe more. I don't know when that movie came out. Yeah. So here was a thing where I get a press release that says these actors are doing press for select interviews. So I put in my request. Now I don't ask for Melissa McCarthy. Right, I know. How do you I, if catch I put big it? Fish. If, I, if I, that's a second question. But with Richard E. Grant is a big fish to you and me, but it I, may not I be a big so. fish. Yeah. Now, if you won an Oscar tonight or tomorrow, rather, he might become a big fish uh, even right. here. But he was a big fish in in the UK, and for a certain group of guys, roughly our age, <laughs> he's a big star to us. Because oh, he is because of with Nell and I. With Nell and I, and and how to. How it's to really get ahead in, in advertising. Oh yeah, bro. Did you ever see that one? Yes, he pr- he produced that one. Bruce you know. Robinson, that right? Was, the I director, maybe right. writer, director. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Um, if you've never seen, I think it's with Noel and I. How to get ahead in advertising? Uh, you must check it out. But with Noel and I is such an, a cult. Do you think that's how you thing. say it? So I got, or do you think it's since his name is with Noel? Is it with Noel and I? So I say with, with Noel and I too, but I think it's with Noel. It and might I. be, but that's just the pot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. I hate all of us right now. Anyway. <laughs> what? No, I don't. <laughs> We're getting so, that wrong. Okay, so let me just finish because you asked the question. I'm going to use some of my skills to keep us on track. Okay. So, so, yes. so, so, yeah, so please <laughs> implement any skill. Okay. You that too. You have. And you do too, because I think it'll come. We're out in other. nature in like this really relaxing place, and we're probably going to sound like Perry Como. <laughs> I wonder if my stomach is gurgling. I wonder if you can hear it. Mr. Longstreet, it's a girl. <laughs> oh, wait. <I> totally <laughs> yeah. heard that. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. That, totally. That came in loud and strong. Oh, That's God. Funny. What's wrong? At least it's not gas. No, nothing. Oh, thank God it's not. No. We'll, we'll go. We'll, maybe we'll get a bite after his <laughs> yeah. snack or something. Yes. All we've had is an apple. Oh, yeah. There. I but it's see. been. It's not been like a like a hike. Hike. You know, it's a nature walk. Yeah, it this is a nature in walk. One of those beautiful spots. This is beautiful. It's so great. And see all the people over there. No one comes on this trail. But the... interesting. Yeah, we've been sitting here for at least twenty minutes. Nobody's come by. Not a no. single person. Just the bikers, yeah, we, the uptight bikers. Well, they haven't been up here yet Le- uh, since we sat down. I mean, no, um, I know. So with Richard Grant, like I just decided, with you know, to, that I could maybe get him if We're I. Gonna, you're gonna, you'll edit this one a lot. Then. <laughs> so I no, I put an email together and I say I can provide links for conversations I've had, let's say with with uh, Tim Roth, or yeah. or some other, you know, like I had on 
Uh, Jeffrey, was he Wright. Open? Jeffrey Wright. I don't know if I heard the Tim Roth one. Well, that was the, one of the shorter ones. I took it because I was such a fan. I took a, a short, relatively short. It was hard. We Skyped, and I could so I could watch him. So oh, I have video yeah. of that Skype, too. So, you know, and that was for a movie he was in uh, two years ago about, and I ended up getting by the distributor contacted me and asked me to do a Q&A. So I ended with the director. Oh, that's that, great. Um, so, but, so the Tim Roth thing was a good thing. It was one of those nice things. And he was a lovely person, by the way. He was. He yeah. was really open. Really nice. Yeah. I don't remember. You know, it was one of those cases where you really had just to talk about the film. But fortunately, the film was really good. So, And he was really good in it. He played like a hospice worker. Or I think he was a nurse, male nurse. Oh, but it was very, that one. it seems very good. emphasis on, on, but he would get very emotionally involved with all of his clients. And it's how one family crossed the line and they ended up like suing him or something like that. It was a very so disturbing. Did he fuck his patients like no. water dance? No. Or no, what was the other thing? Water dance? Is that no, with the, water uh, dance Anthony Hopkins? Is it? No, that's a Helen Hunt movie. Uh, oh, the one where I she's think. a sex therapist? No. Yeah, but what that's the one where she's a sex therapist is called something else. Okay. I don't know. It's her and John Hawks. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. That's, that's where she's a sex great. therapist, yeah. Yeah. I did a pilot. Very with low budget on the on the wardrobe for that movie. What? Uh, Helen, what? Hunt, Helen Hunt. <laughs> she's pretty that's naked. T- that's terrible. The American what, what budget. Were you know that I did a pilot with John Hawks for Amazon that didn't get picked up. Oh wow. That's too bad. What, I know. I just wanted to finish this story which is um, See that's like half the wingspan of what that Oh yeah, no that was. you're right. So I can put together a list of a few like actors like on the scale of Richard Grant. Yes, for his team, and say this. I've interviewed these. But can I get Rich Grant here? Provide this to his team if there is a team, or his manager, or somebody if they have to oversee. It. Most guests, you don't have to worry about that because it's just a timing, right. timing, scheduling thing. For other people, when you get to a certain point, there may be people running interference. Mm-hmm. There might be, and they have to approve. The team has to approve which people they're going to let their client talk to. Do you have a promo thing so, that says like you've talked to all these great people? And... Well, I will. I'll put a, an email together to Taylor. It has to guests. be so tailored. Don't though. you have to mention I them? I have, and that yeah. helps always. Like I had Jeffrey Wright on recently, Edie Falco. Like, so I can. Yeah. Put, so this is now factual. This is out there. Anybody can listen to it. Yeah. That these level of actors, so I can then use that. And most of the people that I really want to talk to are in that level. Like, they're people that do consistently great work, that are really talented, that are real work a day, you know, right. Like, right. like disciplined actors, you know. Yes. And there are people like that who take their work very seriously, and that's how come they can do so much, because they don't fuck away at their time. Yeah, no, you have to. Yeah. And they work, and they surround themselves with 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 good people. You know. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, so yes, yeah, so each additional great actor or great people person I get on, it helps the next time. I had on this year, I just had a banner year with that, so I hope. So uh, <laughs> it's all such. A... I love the idea of it being a seasonal show, like Lobsterman or something. It's just like. Yeah, we can't. You can't fit Max in the winter up here. <laughs> anyway, that's that's. So I don't know how to get on bigger yes. A list celebrities. That I want be... you to get a sassy producer. Okay. Well, however, we can make that happen. Yes, I don't know. I don't even know. Maybe or just, just a... get me, and then maybe they can get me on NPR. <laughs> you know, yes. Something like that. God, I don't know how you get gigs like that. Yeah, you just, you know, connections, timing, all the above, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Have have dirt in someone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That would probably be really good. I don't know. Should don't we know. switch so we get sun on the other sides of our faces? We could do that. Like aim more towards the sun? I feel like we're dead. It's, no. I feel like it's right above us. So it's, we're... It, I just feel like it's hitting this... Wait, I lost that little. Wait, can we take a break for a second? Yeah. Are we allowed to do that? We can. No one will know. Right? Nope. We're so stoned. Nobody will know. Where's my phone? Right. I'm going to get us more stone. No, I'm not. You show up at Karen Silas's house. And... Yeah. Yo, of course. I know. But that would be all right. No, she's very beautiful. She, I think she's age appropriate. We'll see. I, I think she's probably absolutely right in her fifties. Yeah, she, but she's age beautiful. 
How much older than I? Yes, yeah, she has. She's not, I don't think she's. A, she, she's probably barely fifty. I guess. I don't know. She had. She had done. Uh, what happened was with Tom Noonan, and, and she did uh, some Hal Hartley, two or three Hal Hartley movies. Wow, Tom Noonan. But great. Did, did I tell you I delivered balloons to him once? You're talking about the actor who was in silent in. Um, yep. Manhunter. Manhunter. Yeah. Tom Noonan. He played. Dollarhide, Francis Dollarhide. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Yes. And he gets at the end, he takes off his shirt and he sh- and the tattoo. Right. Oh my God, that was terrifying. I keep thinking of him coming through that screen. They're projecting a slide or something. But I worked in, I worked all these weird jobs. I was a waiter and a caterer. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One thing was oh, balloon so delivery. You, Did I ever tell you this before? I'm not sure. This is probably a repeat. No, I don't think it's. I remember a blood story on the episode one just, of. Oh, they were sh- weird. They were black and pink, and they were huge. But I remember when he opened the door and I walked into his apartment. I couldn't believe it was him, and I was he, horrified. He's I couldn't so stop scary. staring at him. He looks like a fucking yeah. crazy person, but he's. You know, he's done two episodes he of the show. He played it up. Too. I, don't want I the, think he said. Where the fuck is my phone? I wanted to. Uh, oh, here it is. I wanted just to use this as a flashlight too. Let's see if I can. But it was very daunting to see his face. I saw Willem Dafoe oh my God. in Greenwich Village once, and I was tripping my balls off. And I had seen um, Last Temptation of Christ like a couple of weeks before, and I almost had a meltdown. Oh, wow. Um, it yeah, didn't make sense. No, he is the guy that, I mean, he is a guy I would absolutely, obviously love to bring on. Yeah, he's the perfect guest, and you know. But anytime I can get Willem Dafoe, odds are it'll be like for a particular film. I'm going to be expected just to talk the film up, which is fine. But I want to, you know, go further with somebody like Willem Dafoe. I mean, that's the that's the difficulty I'm in. Like I want to have an hour and a half with Willem Dafoe. Yeah, where we're talking it. You know, you want to talk about his theater have, and his craft with and everything. All kinds yeah, of stuff. he's done right, and and get a little further. Um, but you do. You always do that. Well, it's harder with those guys, so uh, you have to create relationships, or you know, it's easier with directors to have that than a, than an actor, right? Uh, but you're right. I mean, it would be it's, it's a sensational. Yeah, you've had or, bigger directors than actors. Yeah, but I mean, in more, much more. Um, I don't mean to put my back to you. <laughs> you totally facing away from me. Now. Okay. I'm doing like a it's a, like a gorilla you're pivoting. gesture. It's just like I don't know where I can't sit anywhere if he like puts that. Puts his back to you. Can't you sit? No, it's all right. I'm good. And I feel like back I could back up. Evenly, I could back yeah. up. That's what I can do. Here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're beautiful. You where you are. I want us both facing this way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's hard to be on a that big of a incline because then you're. I know. Topple over at some point. I just don't want to get burnt on one. <clears throat> Damn it! I just squandered in my water. Did you spill your water? Just a little, like literally, like. It's precious out here. I know. We just. I have some too. We're not going to die today. No. <laughs> I've run into yeah. younger people up here hiking together, and they're going like, "Is there, is there a place at the top or something?" And I'm like, "No, it's just the neighborhood. It's <laughs> four miles down to yeah. any kind of town." And they're like, "I've given people my water bottles up here before." Oh, really? European exchange students who are just like, "Have no idea." Has the, is the lodge? Oh, in the summer, up, is the lodge up there? I'm like no the lodge. There's nothing. There's no lodge. Yeah. No. The Hodge. You're in the middle of you're in mountain lion country with no water. <laughs> are, there must be bears too. Not here though. Not here. And more dense, are, dense. About half an hour north you can see black bears immediately. Yeah. But there are mountain lions here and deer and I think there's lynx. Lynxes. 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 Badgers. You're talking to one now. I understand. But oh, that's, and that's the other guest person that though. That's the see. Then there's not dealing with both, and I'm like, uh, I literally could take why haven't years. Why you had a badger on your show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I have. No, no but I, I'm sorry. What were you there's saying? a whole group of people that I I, I covet, you know, and I'm trying to get them on the show, and like I will badger people. I mean, but I, you know, I do it. I wait a while. There's certain people, and you know, it just never happens. But some people, it just takes months. Sometimes yeah. it takes a couple of years to get somebody on the show, just because I could see that they Why don't prioritize it. You know, yeah, and, and got to romance them a little bit. I'd think. Right? Oh, and I'm very polite about it, but I, I, I think there's a couple of people coming on like that, you know, or eventually, I'll, yeah, I'll just get them on because there's their project came up and they were available, and you know, like I just got on, you know, this year also Paul Schrader. 
Yeah. What an incredible opportunity. And then um, Gus. Gus did the show. That's great. Gus Van Zandt. No, Gus Pulowski. <laughs> yeah, Gus Van Zandt. I loved his earlier work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Gus Van Zandt. I was, uh, you know, it was just like one of those guys I always wanted to talk to. But yeah. I felt that way about lots. Of, I feel that way a lot about older character actors, too. I have, like, an allegiance to people I grew up seeing, you know, in TV and in movies. Yeah, I love, I love having the opportunity. Do you know who I ran into at a Trader Joe's a few weeks ago? No. Uh, the actor Tony LoBianco from uh, Seven Up's oh, Honeymoon yeah, Killers. Of course. Yeah, All the those, French and, Connection. And the French Connection. My dad actually used to be friends no, with his that, brother. Am I thinking of the right person? Tony LoBianco was on yes. Hill Street Blues. No. Right? No. I don't okay. think he did do a cop show, but not. That's Daniel J. Travante. That's right. Yeah. Okay. They do have a similar look. Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Some might call it Italian American. I don't know. Yeah. So. What is no, it? but Tony LoBianco. Great, uh, you know, just uh, I and his brother and my dad knew each other years ago. They, I think, he worked for my dad or something like that. And so I brought it up, you know, and then he ended up calling his brother with, you know, with and saying my dad's name. And yeah, and the brother remembered. My father didn't remember. He really knows who Tony Lobianco is. He remembers that he's, you know, the actor, but he doesn't remember being friends with the brother. And I do. Weird. Yeah, I loved him in the French Connection. Oh yeah. I know he did a lot of stuff. So I went to his apartment. was unbelievable. It was just really. He had these paintings. Huge old. But, uh, yeah. Well. Yeah. No. No. It was, no. It's not that old. It's, they've actually redone parts of it. Looks like. Um, he's and he's such a nice fellow. He was so nice. But he must have been smart with his money. I think he's a Republican, but that's that's okay. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. I know. Oh, God. But anyway, he was a great guest, and um, you know, he was happy to talk about stuff and. Just, you know, I ran into him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the Seven Ups Friedkin too? No. That was, it was definitely one of those, what's his name, the Italian producer, <laughs> D'Antoni, I want to say. Oh, Dino De Laurentiis? It's either him or D'Antoni. Oh, I don't know. One of those guys, that, yeah, that they produced, pretty sure they produced Serpico or one of those, or maybe it was Dog Day Afternoon, I can't remember. Anyhow, I think it was Dog Day. Oh boy, I, I, you're <laughs> speechless. It's not a good sign, huh? I'm uh, zoning out at that mountain. Oh wow. Who did I just? Oh, I just had on Brooke Adams. Yes, that would be amazing. Did you talk about Invasion of the Body yeah. Snatchers? Yeah. Sure. What not did a lot. What did she say about that? Working with Donald Sutherland. Well, it turned out he she had to that movie. And another cheap role movie called A Man and a Woman in a Bank. Do you remember that title? No. A little seventies independent film probably. I have a bigger Burke Adams question though. But so she but my point is is Donald Sutherland was in that with her and that he did Invasion of the Bicentral right around the same time. Really? And yeah, so because Sutherland wanted to have like a classic a Hollywood couple type of thing going with her. But it just didn't. She, I guess, she wasn't committed to that same vision. But he wanted to do that kind of classic Spencer, Tracy, Catherine Hepburn type of, you know. And that's what that movie where they was. do a bunch of movies together in different variations on character. And well, it, that Donald Sutherland asked her to do that other movie called The Man, a Woman, in a Bank because he wanted to build this thing. Obviously, you know, she's gorgeous. He probably was yeah, in love with her. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She, she in those. I mean, she's so beautiful. Yes, you know. she is. What was your other Brooke Adams question? She's in a movie with Griffin Dunn. Oh, my oh God. My goodness. I am so retarded. <laughs> I am so stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> Adam, Alfred's boxes have a TV that's called the Alfred. I got an electric and shock I or something. I, I got an electric shock. tissue. <laughs> And ejected most of them. <laughs> we, we can still eat that. <laughs> I'm not eating that. <laughs> no, I don't care. That was so lovely to see that. I love watching that. Watching uh, oh, I'm sorry. Do you think that cinnamon mints are bad for wildlife? <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll, I'll collect them and I'll keep them in my pocket. <laughs> and then we get attacked by a bear. <laughs> I don't like... I suppose we could eat them. They're not like 
I'm not eating them. <laughs> You're not eating those? I agree. I, 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 I was good for wasting them, but not for... Uh, there may be some kind of desert bacteria or fungus that we don't even know about. They no, look I relatively think... clean. No, they're okay. And if you were to wipe them off, on, even on your shirt... But anything, rodents and birds would eat these. We can't leave them. This would be a rude surprise. Yeah, no, you're right. Why do that to an animal? Why expose an animal? I'll clean it up, Curiously too. strong. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I love that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Just like... <laughs> so, my question was, Brooke Adams is in a movie with Griffin Dunn called Almost You, and the director is Adam Brooks... And I'm wondering if she did a nom de guerre and actually directed it. No, she did not direct it. She didn't? No. I don't think so, no. She's not. I don't think she did. But she did say that we did talk about Griffin Dunn. Yeah. And that they're they're good friends. And I didn't know that. And because Griffin did my show twice. Did he really? Yeah, he recently did. And he recently did when he did this documentary about his aunt. Um, Oh, Joan Didion. Joan Didion. And... I had him on for that, and we had a longer, t- we had a nice solid, like, half hour to 40, I don't remember exactly, the exact length, but I think it was a while. I've and he was happy to I've talk about, it. he was happy also to talk about past movies. That yeah. So we were great. able to talk about, like, American Werewolf and all that stuff. Yeah. Be still up to talk about that? Yeah. And I said, you know, I don't like, the, I don't always know if I can bring these things up, but... You know, because you never know if you'll get an actor who wants if to say... If they're old hat. But if you're genuinely yeah. in love with the movies, I don't think it... I think it's all right, especially in this context. And you got to say, I've built a body of work that means something to people. Oh, that movie why would you not so wanna, much to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you want to... you got to value that you had the opportunity to make movies that people 30 years later... Yeah. Still have a, it still has a lot of meaning. And That's it was why his Richard Grant acting right? too was just like And Grant was happy to talk about his earlier work. Like we talked about, I think a couple of things came up. Like with Nell and yeah. a, few other, a few other of his films I brought up. How to get ahead in advertising. Yeah, I love that. It's a really underseen movie, I think. Yeah, it is. It's great. It's the so concept. elaborate. I'm surprised that wasn't released wide. Maybe it was. I don't I doubt it. No, yeah. I think just a few cities. It's great though. Yeah. So, can you what can, which which works can you talk about that you've done? I can talk about any of them. I think. You, I mean, I've signed a Dr. Sleep. I've had to sign like I don't know how many confidentiality clauses, but DN, I can like, uh, all I can say is like the book jacket description of it, you know? It's going to be a really creepy, scary, scary movie. This is uh, the haunted house on Haunted Hill. Oh, that's scary is that what it's too. called? Yeah, but what I was talking, talking about Doctor Sleep, the sequel oh. to The Shining. Oh, oh, that's called Doctor Sleep. I forgot that, about the that's title. That's called Doctor Sleep. Oh yeah, so yeah. that one and when is that's coming out in November? You said November eighth. November eighth. Yeah, which happens to be your thirty sixth birthday, you devil. <laughs> yeah. Keeping that under wraps Good like God. that. Yeah, that'll be fifty seven, fifty eight. Talk about a thinly veiled reference to my own fear of mortality. Right. Well, how how much older am I than you? I think we're the same year. Are we really sixty two? Oh, I'm oh, I'm sorry, much much younger. You are. Aren't you? <laughs> As born sixty three. Yeah. See, that's just Robert. It's like my brother. Very very late, nineteen sixty three. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> Kennedy was still was still president though. But was barely. he alive? Just for like weeks, like two months. Yeah. Wow. I was born September 63. Wow. So was... was my brother. Oh. He was born on September 11th of all days. Wow. I know. Yeah. Not me. No. Yeah, God. I remember calling him that day and he was like, happy fucking birthday, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh, that day. Yes. Where does your brother live? He lives out here. Oh, he is? Yeah, he lives in Woodland Hills. Which oh, okay. Is... I don't. That's really close. He's like ten yeah, minutes away. I think I saw that yeah, on the map. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So you have family here too. Yeah, that's I great. do. We go bowling. We go to Jerry's Deli and then go bowling. Uh huh. Have a corned beef sandwich and go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very L.A. It is. Mm. Where? Is it? Where? No, I don't know. I don't know. I guess Among the Jewish salad. contingency, yeah. perhaps. Where is the? Uh, <laughs> what neighborhood is that in? That's in. Um, God, Studio City in the valley. Mm-hmm. Can you hear this Altoid in my mouth? Really? No, it's just better just to either not talk during it or hold it closer. 
The crows are back. Oh, the these two crows. They they, they've been really flying together. Voices, too. They're going like. They have an incredible vocabulary, like hundreds. Of really, utterances. Different, yeah, different. Uh, that's speech. I guess yeah. you could argue, right? I think so. They're supposed to be incredibly smart. By the way, I'm going to introduce you now. That we're <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. Robert Longstreet, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. But we met you and I met uh, just. And we may have talked about this in the last episode. I should have listened to it. We were both very. Yes. Not run down. It was the end of a long shoot day for you. Yeah, but and I we was sat down. Jacked on. You were on. You. I mean, jacked. You mean coffee? Jacked on caffeine because ca- I was drinking huge. Crash. Yeah, I remember that. You had yeah. one with you. I was like, "You're going to drink that now?" I yeah. I needed it because I was I drove back to New York City after that. That was like two in the morning, right? I got home at like yeah in the middle of the night for sure. I can't remember if I was shooting the next was day or not. I don't, I don't part know. of that character was coffee that. for some reason. Even though it was a really low energy character. It was. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yes. Maybe you have to compensate somehow. Yeah, with it was, was odd. I've never drank that much coffee girl. in my life. That was that was the first time we did the podcast, but we already know each other for a number of years. Yes. You know? I just remember seeing I think it was must have been Septian. It was like one of those BAM Cinefests where they played Septian and Catechism Cataclysm. Yes. That same summer. Yeah, and there was a we met at now a I, party. Maybe that's right. I think you were at the catechism party too. Yeah, well, I was at right across the IFC Center that air, that thing. Did that is that where you had it? I no, I don't or think you, so. I'm I talking think about it's theatrical, so maybe you're talking about a festival or something. I don't know some weird. Th- I, I wanted to say it was the Waverly, but it wasn't. But I haven't been in New that's York where, in so long. That's where. That's oh you, no, but the Waverly became the IFC Center. Oh, did it? Oh, then it was. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's what that theater is called, the IFC Center. Wow, I used to live right near there. That's right. So you're really dating yourself if you because that that's hasn't true. been the Waverly in, in the eighties, in yeah. like twenty something years. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, it just became the IFC Center. You could tie your horse up right out front. <laughs> it was amazing. You could drink the East River. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Anyway, this has been a great, it was a great idea to celebrate however many years of friendship by yes. coming up here. I, I really kind of had this, you know, wanting to always do a walk up here, you know, mm-hmm. or like come come and visit had and do that. Have you seen pictures? I guess so, you know, and and just know people did it, and always said that's something I'd like to do when I come out here once get to have that kind of experience, you know. Yes, and not be either a tourist or just I don't know. No, it's so beautiful up yeah. here. It's I like crazy. coming in and when I go to places, being like, do as they do where they live, you know. Right? I don't generally do the tourist thing. This is my but thing. This is a great town in a big way. Yeah. I do this all the time. I'm gonna have to start investigating other trails over there too. Well, you grew up in, uh, as you said, Massachusetts, and it sounds, even though you're on like it sounds like a uh, coastal town, that yeah. still Massachusetts does have. I mean, a lot of mountains, not I too get, far. You or mean, up England, in the Berkshires or, and then and stuff. the Berkshires all the way on the west side. But you have also, I guess, in New England, you have mountain ranges pretty close. You can go to on a weekend. Yeah, there are hills and things like that. Yeah, but, yeah. Anyway, so, but. Uh, you know, I can't imagine not living in a place where there weren't mountains, but... I know. When I went first went to Wyoming, I couldn't believe the Tetons and just mountains. Even when I came to California, mm-hmm. the first time I couldn't believe mountains just jutting out of the horizon like that. What were you doing in, in Wyoming? I was working on a ranch. I don't remember that. When I was 15, 14, really? 15. Yeah. Was this an alternative to, like... Like a camp kind of thing? No, like I was going to say like... I did Outward Bound once. Well, that's closer, Montana. but I was thinking yeah. of a, like a, some sort of detention no, you know, no. thing for, I only for, went young, to one for young wayward boys, you know. No, I only went to that one place near Fenway Park after I pulled a couple of fire alarms <laughs> <laughs> in high school because I was Imagine. pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. But I had to go to court for it. That made the, the headlines. It did. <laughs> it would now. You could ruin your career. No. God, but like lying about things. Like, I don't want to talk about it, but what's his name? Jesse Smollett. Oh, my God. Is that his name? Just, Jesse Smollett. S- Jesse Smollett or Smollett, but yeah, I think it's Smollett. Just, oh, God. There's no E at the end, right? So it could be Smollett. Anyhow. Yeah, I don't know. yeah that's just a, it's that's very, just... very unfortunate. The guy is has a severe issue of some kind. Severe. Yeah. Like, how you make that choice. You know, most people who fuck up, at least only fuck up to some little circle of people in their lives right, that, right. that have 
invested full love and trust in them. This is somebody who just, just took on a, a practically an entire race of pe- two races. He he did something that was setting us back. We're trying to make progress in I our know. racial relationships, and these are the things that divide us because you get these right wingers who say, "See, all these these crimes are faked," and then the white no, it's hor- the outcome is horrible. But horrible. Was it all? self-serving or was it yes you need to hear this like we need this kind of emergency because we're not talking about this enough or well if that was his intention there were far more constructive ways of figuring that out and also he destroyed his skin crawl he who would ever hire this guy again oh no it's over he's i mean he can maybe write a book at least he didn't do anything i don't think he's you know he probably will not do jail time is my guess but he's gonna have to pay a fine he's gonna have to do a lot of penance he's gonna (laughs) he's already gonna be punished he's not gonna get hired his career is over if you why would you do something so it's so poorly planned i mean i hate it for a million reasons yeah god i'm sorry i mentioned it but it just had been bothering me well where are you as an actor where you get such a sense of entitlement? Because most actors are, if anything, have a complex. You would know more about this either directly or through your friends and colleagues. But right. that that an actor is meant to feel grateful for being paid at all. Oh, God, And yeah. that is obviously a, tr- a very unhealthy mind frame to feel grateful just to get any pay for something as opposed to getting actually paid what you deserve, right. <laughs> you, you know? And I have to say, you, I think, made choices in your in your life, I should say, when you just decided I'm not doing this and that anymore because it doesn't help the career. Where Where's the benefit? There has to be a benefit enough right. to continue doing it, something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and just people need to pay you. But what was that? What did that have? Well, no, let's get off it. So, what were, I don't know what we were on, but... Uh, <laughs> What were we on there? Oh, the Jesse, Jesse Small, Small, Smollett. I don't know. I just feel it. I mean, I think he's gotten, there's been plenty of reaction, response out there, and that uh, I'm, there's nothing I'm going to bring to this conversation. No, me that, either. Except just, just have, to say, it's just, it's just such a, really a stupid alarming. thing, a destructive thing, and then also just so poorly planned and laid out. Like, I was thinking this guy wants to get caught for some reason on, so, on top of everything else. He yeah. it seems like he wants to get caught because he just was so sloppy, you know? I don't think so. I just, I can't help but, like, ugh, just the shame. He like, could you imagine the shame you would be in? Just amazing. It's almost as amazing as putting a wa- water bottle in that position right next to your phone and your no, recording that's right. device. That's what Orner and I used to call the $6,000 cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, right. The one that's sitting right next, next to, to the your, camera. Like, your Mac. Your or your Mac. That's yeah. right. It's the Mac thing. Like way back when they were that much. But yeah, that is the $6,000 bottle of water. I know I'm going to move my phone at least. So yeah, I don't really feel that much more compelled by the story. It's just a sign of our times to some degree also. this yeah, kind of it just made me feel bad, ill. Bad, yeah, like somebody would ex- exploit, make, I mean, how is he going to bounce back <laughs> Of any kind of community that he oh, would be socializing in, I don't think he can because he's alienated many gay people, many African American people, many yeah. white people, <laughs> many actors. Like who's left? Yeah, it's just <laughs> podcasters. Jesse, if you're listening, feel free to come on as my next guest. Yeah. I'll give you, I'll Gosh. give you two hours. Um, there will know. be there will be interesting like Nightline interviews about it, and then it'll like. The same, It'll come out with I an think album no one will buy. And he's such a... He uh, won't get cast. And it's, oh, God. Yeah, cut this out. Yeah, why? It's, no, I mean, you know, it's not like we're shedding any new kind of negative attention on them. No, no. But and it's everybody's talking about it. So sad you all know. around. Then, on top of it, he had to make a bunch of people that were very powerful and could have really been a help to him. He had to embarrass them and humiliate them by, by for them sticking their necks out for him when the crime I know. was first reported, and most people logically believed that it, he was telling the truth. Oh, beautiful calls of sympathy from yeah, people. From, yeah, from Oprah, from everybody. And then, I think, like just, well, you know, a lot of a very, very uh, powerful folks and high-level celebrities, whatever. Yeah, that's a thing. And they stuck their neck out. It's and then a bad one. Yeah, uh, well, he'll be a pariah. Yeah, for, for for at least uh, a couple of years. <laughs> I think that's where you spend your last time and move out of the country. I think you store away enough. If you have any money, 
put it away because you're going to need for that PR person eventually is gonna, to dig you out in about two years. Is he going to become a total train wreck or kill himself? No, he won't kill himself. And we, I wouldn't want that. I'd rather he just get help, wait a year or two out of respect for all the people that he betrayed, and then come back when the things have cooled down and people realize he's done some, had some time at least to fake penance. You do you know? think you could apologize for something like that? Yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think so. I do. I think everybody can learn because if you can, if you can, if you can really learn something and evolve in a positive way from that, and you can. Right. It's a commitment, though. And then do it. Like I can't stand people to come out the next day with this written apology. They're so disingenuous yeah like so you learned it it was the worst example of that is famously michael richards on the seinfeld show right right he goes out and never and in a club through. and he's getting heckled and he gets pissed off and he might have been on something and he calls them the n-word and it's caught on their phone it goes viral and his career is over and then he goes a week later jerry seinfeld is on the letterman show because he's hawking dvds of the seinfeld show which could potentially sales could get harmed right. from an incident like that. But doesn't potentially, he have him come on? Uh, this he is had me him now. Opinion. He, he brings he brings on uh, right Michael Richards. Michael Richards with him, and Michael Richards says, "You no, know, he's on a video." It's like feed. a week or two later. What? He's on a video. Michael Richards is on a video feed. He's uh, not even there. No, no, he was. I remember on oh. Letterman. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. I could feed. be wrong. I, th- I remember it that he was there, but you could be right. No, it's weird because his On face, the Letterman show? Yeah. Okay. His face, Michael Richards' face is so down and dead that David right. Letterman actually cracked up oh. the second his face came on screen. It, well, and then he I goes, I want to apologize. Or like, he didn't even say that. He might have just said to the Afro-Americans, Afro-Americans, dude, who uses that expression I don't in know. 20 years? Afro Americans. God, I don't remember that whole thing. I just know that. I mean, I oh, do. Oh, let's but, let's Google it when we get down. But I don't remember his resp- that response. Oh yeah, I remember it. How do you pull that? Out? That's such an unwelcome thing. Anyway, Look it up. Uh, it's got to be online, available somewhere on YouTube, right? They, they, yeah, it's got to be. It, it's just it was just one of those awful, awful right. things, right. and I I think he's a little mystified about what happened. But I think most importantly, he wanted to... Uh... We have him uh, live via satellite yes, from Los do. Angeles. Sorry, this do. should be Michael Richards. Michael, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm uh, not doing too good. Yeah. What, why don't you explain exactly what happened for the folks who may not know? I, uh, I lost my temper on stage. I was at uh, a comedy club trying to uh, do my act, and I got heckled, and I I, I took it badly and went into a, a rage, and uh, uh, said some pretty uh, nasty things to some Afro Americans. A lot of trash talk, and uh, stop laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> and what, uh, what were the, uh, the, the, the you were be actually being heckled, or were they just talking and disturbing the act? Uh, that was going on too. Uh huh. And did you? I know. I'm mean, hearing your audience laugh, you know, and it's it's. Uh, I'm not even sure that this is uh, where I should be uh, well, addressing so, uh, so, so uh, used, the so situation. Used to... I've already heard you make some jokes about it, and that's okay, you know. But I'm I'm I, you know I'm 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 really busted up over this, and I'm 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 very very sorry. But that's an that amazing appearance. Brand and I just I was actually Seinfeld pissed, more pissed off at Seinfeld for doing it. For why? We, yeah. Like first of all, why are you sticking your neck out? But that's what I maybe that's the best part of it is that he that did guy. that for his friend. But I I look at it very cynically that that DVD box set was coming out, and like I want I don't want to hurt sales. Oh God, I don't know. I can't speak to that. But. Like who people that like uh, for me that guy was like dead to me. Like I, I never watched Seinfeld anymore. Yeah. Well, After it was, that, it was it's really gross when you hear it. It's really. How gross. do I watch that and support the a show where? He said that. I mean, that he could be... There's a great comedian, and he says, um, I never, ever... There's no excuse. I never use the N-word. He goes, except when I stub my toe. <laughs> That's funny. Right. <laughs> Unless I stub my toe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are ways... There, there That's are the... The irony is what that... That's, that's yeah. You know, it's there. It's just below the surface, right? And yeah. that, that... How long... 
What is he? What kind of guy is that? Where that's well, all it took? It's context too. Like even the it's like no one is allowed to say that fucking word. Right. Not one white person on the planet. But hold a little closer because I'm not by the controls. They're just not allowed. But it's really different if you're being savage and abusive to somebody and using that, or if you're right. like, or it's someone who just like tosses it off. People will say it in the south to you, like they don't Still? know you. Strangers right. will drop. They that. just. Sometimes, they, right? The assumption being that because I'm this way, so are you. Yeah, like default is that you're it's a racist, amazing. like me. So we can talk like this. Yeah, and there's no black guys suck not using. Can't. Yeah, there are none of them listening. You can blow them off and feel shameful, or you can correct somebody. Yeah, I never know. I mean, I've I've gotten it's a imp- tough I've, call. I've, I've kind of fish eyes you're looking into. But you know what? That's very rare. Well, I'm not going to say it's rare, but I've never had that uh, with a particular because I didn't grow up in this. I didn't live in the South or grow up in the South or have lived in the South. But, and by the way, I don't think that racism is purely a Southern American thing. I, no. It certainly happens up here. I've had white people in California say it. And then Massachusetts, come on. If you're really in any rough area, there was a lot of racial oh, yeah. tension oh, in, God, that, in yeah. Boston. Oh, sure. But um, the point is, is that most of the time it's more subtle. You know, and it's it's the way people talk about frame this like an African American woman or somebody who's in power who's African American, and there's clearly some bigotry going on here. And it's no matter how they talk about somebody. Oh, it's overt now. I think and it is again because that's right. And I, it, it's overt because of this, you know, president. I mean, and the, what we're going through as a country and with this type of toxic uh, government and. I can't believe I'm wishing four years of my life away to just go so fast, <laughs> you know? But that's it's... wishing your life away. Yeah, God, I don't want to talk about this shit either. Yeah, there are some alarming things going on, though. There's a lot. Ugh, there's some erosion that's freaking me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with that, does it ever come back as healthy as it was before that erosion? <laughs> it better be. This better be like shaving it. It felt you, like we were making you look some. Like you just saw a rattlesnake. No. Did you see something scary? No, no. You I look don't. startled. No, no, no. No, believe me. If you see, if I see a, <laughs> a rattlesnake for the, the tail, yeah, I've seen them up here. It's not hot enough. They're still hybrid. Oh my god, good. But there's bad ones. There's there's one. I forget what it is. The western diamondback, where you can't. There's one of them. You get bitten, and they give you an anti venom, but it's for a different rattlesnake. So then you have two venoms in you. Oh, Jesus. It's better to just run the course. <laughs> but there's one that is pretty, it's a pretty deadly snake. And they're prevalent here, but it's touch mm-hmm. and go if you get bit by them. My God. All my hiking was always upstate New York or New England, so I just Don't never. Don't they have copperheads? I never saw a snake in any hike. No, maybe a gardener snake, you know, tiny little. I think there's even rattlesnakes in Maine. Wow. I, I thought they were just arid climate, but... mm You're right. No, they're even in North Carolina, and I think they're all over the place. But there's bad ones out here. Really big ones. I saw two crows steal a big snake from a hawk out in the <laughs> desert Christ. and made it drop it. Really? And I went to where it dropped, and it wasn't there. It was still alive. It had gone down a hole. Oh, my God. But it was huge. Like hair sized? What? Like a hair? Like a rabbit hair sized? Like, yeah. You know how hairs can be big? They're bigger, I guess, or? Yes. They're, they're, they yeah, get those the big back legs that. Five feet long. Yeah. Mm. There were hairs out there, too. Those big, long eared hairs, they're great. So you're you're on this you're in the movie the sequel to The Shining. Yes, that's a big deal. And you said Stephen King wrote it. He wrote it. Yeah. So that's a big deal too. Yeah, it's a book that came out in I don't know if it's thirteen or six. It's been around for a while, but it's his sequel to The Shining. It's called what again? It's called Sleep? Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Interesting, because he never liked. From what I heard, he ne- he certainly didn't like the Kubrick Shining. No, he didn't. I think he even took a crack at it, didn't he? Was the TV movie version that? Or that? somebody did. I think I you're don't, right. I don't know that well enough. They definitely did a TV version, like a, you know, 
uh, miniseries or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think there's a couple. Okay. Yeah, you may be right. Um, yeah, this is very different. Very the, true to the book. Carrie was a waste of a remake. I, I, I mean, I know the filmmaker, but... I didn't see that. I don't know. No, no, I didn't like that. That's just so perfect, that movie. Why you get it? You know what I mean? Like... There's nothing to not like about Carrie. No, you can't. There's some Space. of those that just leave them alone. Like if they tried to make, it's like trying to remake Jaws. Yeah. Like, why? Why? They will. Why do it? But it's just that such a fantastic. Like you oh, know. God and the remaking Willy Wonka. Jesus Christ. That was a yeah. That, that was horrible. Horrible. Well, that movie's just like God. Leave that movie alone. That movie's perfect. Now they're making, well, are they perfect. making sound, what are they making? The Wizard of Oz, right? And then they're redoing that, I think. But the other long books, right? Not I don't know. not ones with Dorothy in them? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, are there Baum books? Oh, Baum, that's his name. Baum. I think so. Is it, or Baum, what, how did you pronounce it? I pronounced it completely wrong. Oh, I just say Frank Baum. I said like I Lom. I oh, melted oh. the word lamb. I see. Lamb. <laughs> But that's uh, and you're you have a subs- quite a substantial role in that movie. It sounds like the I'm uh, Doctor co- Sleep. I'm a co- I'm a co-star in it. Like the real stars are Rebecca Ferguson and Ewan McGregor. Oh, great! And I'm a member of a death cult that it's it's sort of two worlds that wind up colliding. Mm-hmm. And I'm in one of the worlds where a bunch of horrible people that kill children. And what what's the oh, oh, oh that the is the horrible not. thing? I got yeah, it. I see. What's that? We're called the True Knot. That's the name of our group. True Knot? The True Knot. The True Knot. Yeah. And we're semi, semi-mortal semi beings. Wow. This doesn't sound like the first movie at all. No, it's very, very different. It won't be the same. There's there's some crossover, but not much at all. I mean, The Shining is essentially just a and an elaborate cons- haunted house movie. Yeah, it's it? contained. This is sprawling. Okay. So how is it the sequel? Um, because Danny is in it. It's Danny now in his forties, the little boy. I see. C- could he actually be in if that were real time? I think so. Right, because like that came out in seventy nine. I know that it came out in the spring or summer of seventy nine, The Shining. Yeah. And now we're in forty years ago. Yeah. Right. Yep. Eighty nine, ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they worked out the math. So he he, he was what six, seven at the time. I think so. I mean, in the movie, it could have been a different age than the book. And this yeah. is definitely going to be based on the book. Very much. It's um, very true to it. And I, don't, and I read the book 40 years ago. God, the first The Shining is scary. So is this. Dr. Sleep was scary. When I went back and read it before the movie, oh, before I even got the script. Both or? What? Did you read The Shining? No, I just read Dr. Sleep. Okay. The Stephen King's book, and I I was thinking, God, I was thinking this might be fun and a little scary, but I forgot that Stephen King is fucking terrifying. Is he? Yes. How? Just from reading? Yeah. Because it's... He uh, just goes to such dark places, and like, in this, like the child killings in this are disturbing. Wow. Well, so Danny Torrance is... Did they, it's not the actor who played Danny. No. No. No, it's Ewan McGregor. Oh, Ewan, Ewan McGregor. Yeah. Playing a little younger, I guess. I don't know how old he is. I don't know. I have no idea. But he's a good actor. Yeah, he's great. But did you ever see him in Fargo, the series? Yes. Did you see that two scene? two characters? Yeah, pro- right? Yeah, did you What did you make it. of that? You thought, I loved it. Yeah. I didn't mind it, but at first it was a little bit, like, took a little getting used to. Disconcerting? Just like you I didn't think of him separation. as the right actor playing somebody from, yeah, you know, you know Minnesota. I don't think it's as seamless as like um, adaptation and stuff like that. Like you can watch adaptation and forget that Nicolas Cage is doing both of oh, those guys. Oh, that's right. That's right. Wow, that was a great movie. Yeah, I love that. I watched that again recently. That movie really holds up. Does it? Yeah. It's, it's really been a long time. So I remember seeing that like twice, like right away because I, his I loved it so much. Is beautiful. Man. Yeah, that might be one of his last. I mean, there's scenes with the two of them together that make you cry, mm-hmm. and he's doing it. Yeah, I mean, he's been in some entertaining stuff, but I don't know if he's ever delivered since then like that. I don't know. 
I don't know. I haven't seen Mandy. I saw that. <laughs> it's another batshit crazy, right? Yep. Which is great. I don't. Yeah. I really like him. Yeah. Well, he's sort of gotten over the hump now, where he's sort of a phenomenon in a way. Oh God, yeah. Oh, he's definitely an icon. And he outlived all of his, or out careered all of his cynics or critics or whatever you want to call them. He just never stopped working them out of the level and like weathered it all. Right. Yeah, and still doing big stuff along the way. Is he? Yeah, he. God, he's made so many movies. He's probably like made like what the forties actors used to make. Like, that's he's right. Probably made like two, two, two year. movies or something like that. I don't. I don't know. That's just a guess. But he's a real. He's been. He man. does like two a year, right? But he still managed to, to be penniless. Or is that he's true? a dead or something? Yeah, he. That's and so he's talking some millions Andy and millions Rich of person. dollars a movie. How do you? How can you be? Bad decisions. I don't. God. You got to make a series of bad decisions. I think it's really easy to get poor if you're not careful. I guess. Yeah, people lose fortunes. I can't think of a more beautiful day than this. It's so gorgeous. What time is it? It's three. Yeah, there's not a sound up here. This has been. This is yeah, like. Isn't it amazing that we're in the middle of a city and it's yeah. so silent? Yeah, it's really something. It's been really terrific. And so you okay? Just mention mention the other project because that's coming. Um, you the oh, it's already out. Danny, the Haunting of Hill House. The Haunted Hill House on TV. Yeah, that's on uh, Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah, and, and that and came out October. The first season's already out. Binge watch Robert in that series. Yeah. The Haunting How many episodes of Hill House. were you on? I'm in uh, six out of the ten. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna... in it very little in the in the beginning, and then I have big moments at the end. Oh, okay. The family moves in, right? Yeah, they move into a haunted house that I'm the caretaker of. It's interesting. There's finally a couple of series on. They're finally kind of starting to figure out how to use serial television properly for horror stories because it's, like, it's tricky. It's new. To, yeah. There aren't a lot of examples of that. Long format horror. Yeah. Most are anthology in the past have been anthology series. You know, it's usually what they do, right? A different situation every episode. Yeah, well, that's what this will turn into. The Haunting of Phil House. Every episode or season? Every season. Yeah, well, that's different, It won't though. be back in that house again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like American Horror Story is another. That, um, yeah, which would be, I would love to come back. On season two of Haunting a Phil House is something totally different. Oh, yeah, that would be wonderful, right? Yeah. Because that's kind of what Jessica Lang is doing, right? Yeah, on that she other did show. it brilliantly on that show. She plays different characters in yeah, different her seasons. Yeah, characters were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I started the second season of that. They're good. It's just that it's just too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? It this is, is where intense. probably binging is not good because if you see them further out, you're more accepting of the sheer amount that of situations they're throwing into the plot line. Yeah, it's just too. Mu- it was just too much. It was like they're just all of a sudden dead people or every everywhere, and everybody's used to it. Like everybody just like wh- <laughs> yeah, still, they just connected. don't leave the house, mm-hmm. <laughs> even though they, you know they're living with more ghosts. <laughs> I know. It just doesn't seem after a while. But so it, it, in a case, in a way, it felt like if you're watching this once every week, you kind of forget a lot of that. Yes. The, the unlikely. Well, this mystery. show had a good conceit of they moved into a mansion that they were going to flip. And then the house starts fucking with them. So they discover all these problems like water leaks and things. Uh-huh. So they can't. If they abandon, they're lost. Wow. They can't afford to. Yeah. No, and then that was sort of how they explained American Horror Story. Not Did to step the, on your show, because yeah. uh, because like the family bought it, but there was like they invested all their, you know, they, and then they couldn't resell it, it for the hotel, same amount. Right? That was the very first. It one. was a, an insane. No, it was it was a it was no, it was, it was a home. It was a home. Oh, okay. oh yes, you're yeah, right. You're right. That first season was a home. The second season, it took place in an insane asylum. Yes, you're right. Yes, and they then changed. I guess each there was season. a hotel too. One of them was hotel. Yeah, I think you're probably. They had to keep changing it, right? Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, this one, the parents... So you can go now if you have Netflix uh, subscription and see Robert in that. What's the name of your character? Um, Don't forget. (laughs) Horace Dudley, Mr. Dudley. Mr. Dudley. Yeah, that show is good. It scared me. 
Okay, good. So you seem to be uh, right now in the horror genre. So I am because of Mike Flanagan. Oh, he right. directed both of that and Doctor Sleep. Oh, great. Yeah. So he's, he's going to be maybe get him on the show. Yes. I should get him on the show. Yeah, you should. You should. He lives out here. Yeah, but he'll be coming east for that yeah, when it comes he's out. Just like he's probably my favorite director I've ever worked with. Hopefully Alex isn't listening. You know, you're going to hurt his feelings. I'm going to hurt He listens to the show, and if he knows you're on it, he's definitely going to listen. It's, I love, that there's so many directors that I love, mm -hmm. but I, Mike and I have had so much, these last two things were so much fun. But like you said, on the way up here to the top of the mountain, you'd work for Alex again in a heartbeat. Oh, Alex Calvo? Yes. <laughs> you kidding? A.D. Calvo. Yeah, he and I talked about a story for another movie that he's actually writing now. I thought he wrote, just wrote a sequel to Miss. Uh, to, oh no, no. Uh, I'm sorry, it was confusing. He his subsequent movie to After the Missing Girl was Sweet 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 Lonely, Sweet, Lonely Girl. Girl, and then a sequel to that. That's what he's doing. I think so. And I, there's yeah. a possibility I'll be back in it myself because I was in Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl. Oh, you were? Yeah, I was um, a druggist, an apothecary, or a yes pharma pharmacist. Oh. Yeah, I was the pharmacist. I had uh, one little scene. But he said he was. But I, I don't know if he. That's great. He's I actually didn't doing know that. that. He said he's going to bring it back. Yeah. No. I would. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Alex and I talk, and I. We're definitely going to work. Oh, together. he would love. To, I know. He yeah. always loves. He always, he's always talking lovingly. Yes. No. There's no question about that. And Mike. Well, well Mike Flanagan is my new crush. My new director crush. Are there? What do you think is your sauciest episode? Oh, that might be the sauciest. You think so? Uh. Wow. I have to think about it. Uh, there's been a few, you know, women on that I've gotten <laughs> talk pretty openly. Did you ever? Women are more more likely, in fact. They are, right? I think so. I get that sense that women are okay, more okay to talk about sex, sexuality. That's encouraging. Getting, really? Yeah. I think so. It's more, you know, about getting laughs when guys talk about it. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. I I shouldn't say. I don't know. Um, but I would believe men were more immature than women. Look at Catalina. Look how you can see it now. How big those mountains are. Oh my God. I didn't realize. So right there at, we'd say one o'clock. Yes. Well, that whole range. Yeah. That, yeah, the two islands so it's Catalina actually twelve o'clock to one o'clock or one. Thing, all the way from the oh yeah, I see it all the way in the back there too. I didn't realize Catalina was that big. It's big, yeah, and the mountains are huge. Should we? Uh, should we cut it? Yeah, cut it and turn around. Oh, we can turn around any time, but I just think we could call it a. a yes, this, of course. This is great though, because I now I think we talked about your work, but we man, we have we I don't know what we have. I don't know what we have, but it it's fine. Robert Longstreet is a working actor. <laughs> He's been in how many, roughly how many films would you say? Feature 70, films. 76 say. or something like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's quite a few. Yeah. And uh, has it been and like an actor you've worked with who's like a, who t turned out like just to be like the dream, the dream. opportunity that you just like, like you worked with somebody who you ended up just, I don't know, feeling like, this was outstanding and oh, a lot of connections with people. I mean, I guess so we talked about filmmakers. I have to go most here. recently, like working with um, Henry Thomas was so much fun on the show. Yeah. And all my scenes were with him. Yeah, and I was scared to death of him at first. Cause really? I, well, I've watched him in movies my whole life. Mm, right. Yeah. So those people always intimidate me. Yeah. Henry Thomas. So he's got to be like forty. Yeah, he's pro I'm probably like 10 or 15 years on him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think what he, I, I can't remember. He was such a young kid during. No, but he was a blast. We were doing really heavy scenes of being so oh. silly mm -hmm. in between. It was, yeah, it was just a real relief. But that was a thrill for me because I was, he's a hero of mine. Wow. I wouldn't have expected that answer. That's a good answer though. Yes. And anything that's like kind of in the festivals right now, it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you. <laughs> You've backed off of that level of film for a minute. I have. I mean, there's some. I, yeah, I know you still help with there's some, the occasional yeah. indie film. And there's some out there. Yeah. yeah, some people you obviously are some a really good screen script. Oh yeah, I That'll mean, make there it. are people that like 
who make tiny movies like Brandon Colvin, right? Who I would do Out anything Wisconsin. he ever did. Really? Just, yeah. Oh, so you just have yeah, faith I in love, him? Yeah, we did a movie called. Um, I remember that. We made sabbatical, but we sabbatical. did a movie called Dim Valley, A Dim Valley. Oh, I haven't seen that it's one. It's going to be great. Oh, it's not out yet? Or no. It's, oh, good. Okay. And it's like, it's full of like sexuality and wood nymphs and it's oh, really wild. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. it's a little bit uh, like magical realism in there? Or? Yeah, a lot. Oh. Yeah. Downright fairy tale. Really? For some of it. Yeah. There's been a couple of films like that. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be very different style, but... No, I love. I mean, I love them. There's. I've done a ton of little movies this year that I'm really excited about. Mm-hmm. I just. I've gotten spoiled, and I'm not thinking about them right now. Right, but, I understand. But they're yeah, good ones. Yeah, I'll probably always make movies that cost as much as like a used car. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's great to do like a a. A fifty thousand dollar movie, and then do like a sixty million dollar movie. Mm-hmm. Like that's so much fun. I bet. Yeah, and as long as the work is good, you can go, just feel good about it. Yeah, right. There's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. There's no downside to that. Yeah, do your work. Try you your know, and it, hardest. And it can't cost you anything. No, you that's better the only be thing. scared. Yeah, you better be scared, and it better cost you. No, no. I mean, not not. not th- Creatively speaking or emotionally speaking, I'm talking about financially. Like, it should not cost you anything to have the, at the very least, is my point. If you're working on a, a, a lower budget film, right, it should not cost you anything. No, even missed work. Like, so that's that's when you should do it. Is when, you know, it's a good quality sc- script. Yeah, the role is good, and you're not missing. You're not losing anything in the process. That's the other part to it right like you don't want to do it at the cost of something more stable or that will you know important, no, important. All. but in the beginning you just you know? do everything sure do anything and everything you can well yeah but you got lucky you know with a number of really good projects that yeah even in the, just in the festival and independence f- film world were good enough to bring enough attention to get you really good directors it's and filmmakers like, to hire you yeah. to do something that's more high profile and just a certain level of quality it's that's great. really helped you yeah, well, and I'm stupid pick, pickier than I have any right to be, well, but I just can't do it if I don't. If, yeah. if it's not being done by somebody else who's saying this is what you're going right. to audition for, then you have to do that for yourself. Yeah, it's just got to be new. <laughs> it's got to be exciting. It's got, yeah. Yeah, I understand. And they have to pay you. <laughs> there. That's they do. A, they do. It doesn't have to always be... Well, because people can come to you and go, like, we don't have any money. It's like, really? What's the cinematographer making? Right. Then I'll just take that. Yeah, Yeah. that's always been the... I'll take that amount. Yeah. (laughs) Just just Just, take what he's getting. Yeah, just have what he's having. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but if you cast an actor, you know, who picks and chooses... Right. You're going to pay 10 times that amount. Right, and and people will. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Those are because they've, at some point, put their foot down. Right, and, just sit on and the, they have, yeah, you have to, you know. And again, if you don't have somebody who you pay to do that, ten or fifteen percent of your income, then you have to do it for yourself. Yes, which I like. I'm so glad I don't yeah. do that. Right. Yeah, I used to always have to do that. Like, say, I'm yeah. going to send one email outside of all this love affair that we're having. That's just going to be perfunctory, mm-hmm. you know. And they, yeah, oh my god, to have managers do that is so much better. Yeah. This is beautiful. Thanks a lot, Robert. Of course, yes.